first set foot on, on that island, what was already there, music-wise? Mm. Well, there was a piano, uh, which was also one of the main reasons why we went there. There's a grand piano standing in the concert hall, which is apparently the northernmost uh, uh, grand piano in the world. It's a, a big black uh, grand piano. It's uh, The brand of the piano is Red October, <laughs> and, um, and it's completely out of tune. And you uh, left it that way? <laughs> you left it out of tune? Yeah, I mean, we, we were not uh, at all uh, uh, capable of tuning it, so, uh, and we left it uh, also, I think it's a, uh, you want to leave things as, as they are somehow. And, um, but we went there and um, of course we recorded that. Um, mm -hmm. But besides that, I think... But what was, was done? What was already done? I've, for, oh yeah, maybe sorry, sorry, sorry I interrupted you. That's okay. Was there already, you made some sketches about what you wanted to do there? Yeah, I, I, I see the, the thing, the, the idea of going there was for us, the three of us in the band, to have a collective starting point. When we've done records before, it's always been, um, a, I had a sketch lying around and then Mass would have some stuff and we'd kind of collect it and then we would make an album. We would always kind of make a framework or have a fascination of something that we would try to achieve on the last record, Magic Chairs, we tried to kind of capture um, our excitement about playing live. So we kind of made a lot of songs that we would rehearse with the live band and then we would go on tour with the songs before they were, re were recorded and, and developed and on the way. This time we wanted to have a starting point in the, in the songwriting uh, that was, was the same starting point for all of us. That's why we made this kind of, uh, you can say, practical solution of picking a place. And then we decided that we didn't want to write any songs or come up with any musical ideas before we actually entered the, the location. Um, so we, the, basically what we did to prepare ourselves was uh, first of all to get a permission to go there which was quite hard and it's a long story but there's mm -hmm. a lot of bureaucracy going on there. Mm -hmm. and, um, but aside from that we had a few books where we could kind of see maps of the site and, uh, and so on. So the first ideas was perhaps, you know, vague ideas of maybe making songs in different houses or different locations and situating songs about that. Um, but aside from that, we just went there with our microphones and uh, our portable uh, recorders and uh, our Gore-Tex jackets, and um, <laughs> and then we were like uh, city boys in a you know wildlife. It's like a nature reservoir. It's come there uh, with a blank sheet. What was your uh, residence there like? You slept in a tent, or we we slept in a container. We had the choice of sleeping in a tent or we could sleep in a in a container. So there was like a container home. There was bunker beds and there was um, um, some water and some electricity and so on. Yeah, you said you you wanted to have totally a blank sheet before going there. Can you then describe when does the first? I assume that once you get there, you want to just stroll around before you actually start mm. working on something. But when was, uh, do you feel, felt that the first moment that something ca came from the island to you that maybe resulted in, in a recording or in... Mm. Because it's a huge playground. Yeah, yeah absolutely, shouldn't. absolutely. I think, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult process to talk about because I think um, while talking about this, we went there for nine days and then afterward we worked on the album for nine months. We didn't write a song in this place. All the songs were written afterward. Um, so I think you have to imagine that uh, the place was more sort of like, um, you can say, a, I don't know, a practical solution in a way. That mm -hmm. this was where we founded the sounds of what would become songs. But when we found the sounds, we didn't think of them as songs. or we didn't think about them as sort of like, uh, this could be that and that and that. There is, uh, though, maybe one uh, kind of example that I think I'm just going to look for it because mm -hmm. um, um, there's this one song that is kind of situated around a th an, a, an instrument, if you like, that we found up there. And it's the first song of the album and it, uh, it looks, like, um, looks like this. So this one, uh, we, <laughs> we uh, called this... Um, instrument Miss Piggy, we nicknamed it Miss Piggy, so, um, and that's because Piggy is, um, uh, in, in Danish, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a little, uh, you know, a little spike or something like that. And um, 
this uh, this particular instrument has uh, is a tank, and I'm I'm pretty sure it used to be the spikes used to be there because it was holding some kind of isolation or something like that mm -hmm. around it. But the isolation is gone, and uh, th this was quite incredible because we found out that this was half filled with water, and up there you have a chimney which is kind of going directly into the tank. So if you put a microphone up there and you hit one of those spikes. Every spike have a different note, so it goes like doo, doo. And in the in the first song of the record, Hollow Mountain, you can hear this instrument basically. It actually starts with the with a with a recording of Rasmus hitting two or three of those notes. And then this was kind of like a recording. Uh, we took that home and Mess kind of started working around it after a little while, kind of adding a little bit of other spikes on top of it. And then I started working on the song around it. But that's probably the best example on, on an instrument we found that was uh, immediately something where you felt, okay, this is really special. This sounds like something recognizable in a way. It sounds like an instrument. And uh, this can easily be turned into something.